Trenton 365. With Jock Howard. Profiling the businesses, organizations, and people that make Trenton better. Hello, friend, and welcome to the Trenton 365 show. I'm your host, Jacques Howard. You're listening over WIMG 1300, watching over WPHY Channel 25 in Mercer County, New Jersey. You can send me an email, Trenton365show at gmail.com, or you can follow us on Twitter as well, at Trenton365. In the studio with me is Kenneth Lewis Sr., another one of the fantastic artists who are in the Mercer County region doing some amazing work. We're going to get into a lot of details, but I do want to tease you a little bit and show you a couple of the wonderful gifts that I received today from Kenneth. Um, these are prints of the work that he does, and we're going to get into all the details, talking about all of his work, how he got into art, and this is the uh, partnering piece with the, with the female, and then we're gonna be talking about all his details of how he works, and this is actually even a book that he's produced as well. So we're gonna get into a whole bunch of details. Kenneth Lewis Sr., First of all, it's been a long time since we've been we're meaning to get together, yes. but um, you know how sometimes time works Absolutely. perfectly. So yes. I'm glad you're finally here in the studio, and congratulations publicly on your success. Thank I've been you. a follower and admirer of your work for quite some time. Yes, I thank you, and I really am grateful, and I appreciate you and WIMG and Trenton 365 for having me on the show. I watch it often, and uh, you have some wonderful guests on here, and I'm just glad to be a part of it. And I really appreciate it. And yep. uh, the two pieces that I gave you actually are called Majestic. Um, that's Majestic. And the other piece is called Humble, Humble. as well. So. All right, and we're going to show Humble again. There we go, folks. Mm -hmm. Now, um, so as you can tell, um, you know, I, I often bring on artists. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's something that's magical about the yes. creation process. Mm -hmm. And uh, any time that I can be a part of assisting in that, um, promoting it, sharing it, I get mm. excited, almost well up with joy. Uh -huh. And uh, one of the things that I always appreciate about your work is that it's so vibrant. Mm -hmm. But I also like, um, and I've talked often about uh, texture, like in clothing and mm -hmm. so forth. But your work, it's textured. And, and I'm going to mm -hmm. go back to the pieces here where you can see the vibrant colors, but then you can also see the, the dripping yes. the running. So you're using a couple of different techniques and we're going to get into that yes. in a little bit later on, but mm -hmm. let's talk about you as a person. Why are you here in this region? Where are you from, et cetera? Okay. Well, I was born in Trenton, New Jersey, and my father was a pastor and, uh, got he, a PK in the house. Yes. PK. <laughs> and, uh, he became a uh, pastor at First Baptist Church in South Boundbrook. We moved to South Boundbrook, and about 10 years later, he became the pastor at Antioch Christian Church in New Brunswick. So I grew up in Boundbrook. Um, we moved from Trenton. I was in the second grade when we moved from Trenton, and I came back to the area. I was 20 years old, and I was a sophomore in college when we came back to the area. I was about to turn 20. And um, so I grew up in that area. I was... I played sports, basketball, football, ran track, and uh, I never thought about doing art, but I always loved art and artists. I always admired art and artists. I always liked going to museums and just looking at, you know, art, uh, but I never thought that I would be doing it. Um, so, you know, basically, I came, I'm one of seven kids. I'm in the middle. There's two girls and a boy older than me and two girls and a boy younger than me. Unfortunately, my two oldest uh, siblings, uh, two sisters and my brother, they're, they've passed, and also both my parents. So I'm the oldest left out of the, you know, the family as far as the uh, the kids. But um, And so just growing up in Boundbrook, and uh, eventually we found our way back. My mother is from Trenton. My father okay. is from Marietta, Georgia. And he was in the military, and he met my mother in the military at Fort Dix at a party. <laughs> and um, And... Next thing you know, we just became Trentontonians, but like I said, that opportunity came up for him for the church in South Boundbrook when we were little and we moved to that area. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, so as a young person, you were involved in sports yes. and so forth, and you always admired art. What did art mean to you as a, as a young person? I just, I love the creativity of artists. I just loved how they can just take um, anything from portraits to abstract, landscapes. I just love looking at the art. And I can find myself, even when I was young and I wasn't painting, I could still stand in front of a picture and I can look at it for a long time. And just, like, look at the detail and just, you know, and I would just admire it. And um, I love uh, Cy Twombly, uh, William de Kooning, mm -hmm. um, you know, Basquiat. 
Picasso. Um, so those were some of the main artists. Matisse, those were the main artists that I loved uh, just admiring and looking at their work. And um, I knew there was something about art. Um, I just didn't know what it was going to turn out to be, but I knew I loved art. Mm -hmm. And were you someone, as, as a child, were you exposed to a lot of cultural things and different mm -hmm. art, et cetera? Yes. Um, I would, like I said, you know, my parents, we would go to museums and we would do things like that. Um, I, you know, art fairs, um, different things like that, cultural events. And my father was a pastor, so we were always going to something with the church and mm -hmm. we were always traveling around, you know, with my father, you know, basically different locations. We were all over the place because he would be a guest pastor here, there. And uh, so I got exposed to a lot of different people, different cultures growing up. Um, and uh, that was a, a, a good opportunity for me as well. I think that shaped, you know, me as well, just being exposed to so many different cultures, mm -hmm. you know, as well. So kudos to your parents mm -hmm. for that, um, because I know me personally, there's always this... Um, there's this, there's this different vibe from people who have a lot of exposure mm -hmm. throughout their lives. Yes. And, and, you know, I often find them with, you know, military families, um, people who mm -hmm. are deeply committed to their faith, always trying to evolve, trying yes. to get better, et cetera. So kudos to your parents. I know they're not with us, but I'm sure spiritually they Absolutely. are with us. Absolutely, yeah. My mother and father, um, because I started painting at the age of 47, my mother got a little glimpse of me painting and uh, she got to see the beginning stages. My father had already passed. And when my mother saw it, she was blown away. But one thing I think, uh, one of the reasons why I think I'm an artist as well is I think it's my mother. My mother, she used to sit down at the table while we were eating because we were a family that sat down. We ate dinner together. It was like you had to come and eat dinner with the family. Mm -hmm. Everybody sat at the table. Believe it or not, nine people, we were at a table having uh you know, breakfast, dinner, you know, usually lunch, we were off to school or something like that. But we always sat down and ate dinner. My mother would sometimes take out a sketch pad and she could draw. And she would just be drawing like ducks and fish and just sketching and just playing around. My mother was a stay at home mom. And my father was the, you know, the sole, you know, outside worker. I don't, I don't want to say that she didn't work because raising That's seven true. kids That's is a true. lot of work. Yeah. And I have a tremendous amount of respect for that, for my mother, for that. And my father was out. We, I never saw our lights go out. I never saw, we didn't have, we, we just had, I was so fortunate to have parents like that. But my mother used to always sketch at the table. And I think it's part of my mother coming out of me. I think this is the art career that my mother should have had because she had talent you can clearly tell mm -hmm. and i think that it that this part of that's coming out of me because i didn't start painting until i was 47. that's interesting that you say that um mm -hmm. it, so what do you remember some of the things like she she was sketching i know you said some animals and so forth but can you Anything. describe for us a People, what it was? she would just get on there and she just start drawing and she did not even hesitate it was just a natural flow it was she could draw a face she could draw like i said animals she could draw anything and it was just really quick and it was like precise and it was you know her deliberate her motions were deliberate and it was you could tell that she could be talking to you about something and she'd turn over to the side and she'd just still be drawing and never miss a beat and i used i would see her doing that all the time mm -hmm. and uh it was amazing to me mm -hmm. and but i was little and i used to see it all the time and little did i know that it probably has something to do with me. Mm -hmm. I, I truly believe that. Mm -hmm. Is um any or any of your other siblings artistically inclined? No, no, none of them, no one else. But I remember I used to be like kind of close to my mom when she was doing it. I used to always be kind of sitting like really close to her, at least one child away, and I would be looking at what she was doing all the time, and. Uh, it's just something that stuck with me. I'll never forget that. I can like I can see as clear as I'm looking at you. I can see her doing that right now. That is absolutely amazing. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was your father's? Um, what was his thoughts about your mom's creativity and her sketching and so I, forth? I don't know because we you never talked about it. But she would just doodle all the time. And but we never talked about it. My father was so bit. Listen, my father worked at General Motors, so he was driving to Ewing General Motors. He was the pastor of the church. I, I think he was the maintenance guy at church. <laughs> and because uh, he always had me and my brothers in there doing something. And um, and that's where we got a lot of our skills as far as painting, carpentry and all that stuff. So my father, because 
when you have seven kids and you're feeding and you know he would my father would buy and flip houses and me and my brothers would go in and work on them and he would buy them and flip them and you know so I had that experience as, as well with my father so I'm very good with my hands as mm -hmm. well because of that yeah we're going to talk a bit about mm -hmm. you as a carpenter because I think that 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 lends nicely to your mm -hmm. artistic ability as well but as a whole like how would you describe your family I know that you've mentioned about like uh, your, your parents like you sat down you had a very structured family life you, you traveled a bit strict that's a <laughs> very, good way to put it very strict um you you like parties and things like that as i got older i kind of got allowed to stay go to a party i had to be home at 11 and i like it funny when richard Pryor used to make the joke he used to say you know be home by 11 and it's like the kids like that's when all the fun starts and it was like but we always had to be home and it, it, it was just a um my parents were very strict <laughs> let me put it that way and uh but as I look back at it, I'm so grateful and thankful for that because I, I just didn't, it, it, I think it helped me because I could, I wasn't out in the streets hanging out. We were at home doing things. We were learning stuff and um, we always had activities to do at the house. And coming with seven kids in the house, we weren't bored because there were seven of us. Mm -hmm. And so we were always doing something. And my father would always have, we, we had games and, you know, just different things that we would have around the house that we would do. We played croquet out in the yard and, you know, so we, it was pretty well-rounded, but it was just strict. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this was like during the 70s yes. when you were growing up? Yep. Yeah, because I graduated high school in 79, 1979. Okay. And um, so, and when we moved to Southbound Brook, my older sisters were pretty much college and on out of the house and my brother was a, like a senior he was he was a little older too so they were older kids you know as we moved there and I was me and my younger brothers and sisters we were there was a gap between the first three and then to me and the next three mm -hmm. okay so. that's awesome so while you were in high school um were you getting exposed to art was 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 art I didn't even go to art class half the time because I was a I was an athlete you know I I loved you know, playing sports. And so I ran track, I played football, I played basketball. And that's really what I focused on mainly. And um, because my parents were so strict, you know, I had to get good grades. So I, you know, I did my, uh, you know, I, I was up on my studies. I got decent grades because if I didn't, I wouldn't be able to play. So I had an incentive to make sure that I did what I needed to do in school because if I didn't, my father had no problem with yanking you off the team. <laughs> so I never, I, I once in the eighth grade, I remember in the eighth grade, you know, I got in trouble in the eighth grade at, at school and everything. And my father took me off the basketball team and it devastated me. Mm -hmm. And he never had to worry about that again. I didn't cut class. I didn't do anything. I was just, I wanted to play and just be involved. So it, it kept me in school. <laughs> it kept me out of trouble. You know, and, and, I, and we're going to drill down on this a little bit after the break. I mean, <laughs> That's something like you, you made it clear. We were strict, but we were a family, etc. Absolutely. But your dad... vacations, everything, dinner, vacations. We we traveled around. Um, my father, even though he was strict, he exposed you to so many different things. And like I said, different cultures and different people. So it was awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just to, if we had laid up a little bit on the strict part. <laughs> <laughs> Kenneth, share your contact information so people can see more about your artwork and then okay. we'll be back after a short break. All right. Um, I'm on Facebook as Kenneth Lewis Sr. Um, also on uh, Instagram and Twitter. Uh, Kate, Kenneth Lewis Sr. on Instagram. But you have to put kind of a dash in there. And you can go on my website and actually link to Instagram, Instagram, excuse me, Twitter, LinkedIn, and it's KJL Art Sanctuary is my website. KJL Art Sanctuary, and um, you can like log in from you know from there to any of the other social media. All right, fantastic. Yep. So, folks, you're listening and watching the Trenton 365 Show. I'm your host, Jacques Howard, in the studio with me. Finally, I got him in here, <laughs> Kenneth Lewis Sr., a fantastic artist. We're going to be talking more about his creativity, the process that he goes through, and where he is with his artwork after a short break. Thank you. Your Grand Mac 2, that's three Mac sizes made just for you. So no matter where you might be at, there's a Big Mac for that. Big Mac for that. Lunchtime already. 
Today's extraordinary, juicy, cheesy, iconic Big Mac burger. Now in three sizes, only at McDonald's for a limited time. Greatness comes in all sizes. Right now, try the Mac Jr. for $2, the Big Mac for $4, or the Grand Mac for only $5. Prices and participation may vary. Do you have a long-distance relationship with breakfast? Does your morning commute take you farther away from the crispy hash browns and freshly brewed coffee you love? Do you tell yourself you're too busy? You just don't have time for sizzling sausage and fluffy eggs. Don't settle for missing breakfast. Let McDonald's close the distance between you and the most important meal of your day. Come together with all your breakfast favorites and the bold flavor of McCafe coffee. Right now, get any size coffee for $1. Price and participation may vary. And welcome back to the Trenton 365 Show. I'm Jacques Howard, your host. In the studio with me is Kenneth Lewis Sr., who's an artist. And we're going to be talking about a bunch of his work. And I do want to plug for the people who are watching on television. This is one of the gifts that I received today uh, from Kenneth. And this is a print. His pieces are much, much larger than this 8x10 or 8x11, and we're going to be talking about that in a bit. We've just been talking about some of the details about who he was, his childhood, his upbringing, etc. Mm-hmm. And um, during that short break, man, we were talking, yes. and, like, and, and you were talking about your parents were good parents, yes. and they were strict, but you got a lot of exposure. Mm-hmm. Can you help translate that mm-hmm. into uh, present day times and the importance of people getting exposure? Well, well, for one, because of that, um, getting the exposure, going around and experiencing different cultures, going to different churches, because my father had a Baptist church, but we went to Pentecostal churches, we went to Catholic churches. I mean, my father was friends with a bunch of different pastors, priests, rabbis, so I got exposed to a lot of different people from that. And, um, and so it, it made me be an open person, so, so I'm very open, and that's part of my art, it has an openness to it as well. And um, it also, like I said, it, it kept me, uh, with them being strict, it kept me pretty level growing up, um, you know, as a child and into adulthood. And uh, it made me, you know, want to care for my family, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, as well. I have a son and a daughter and I have a five-year-old grandson right now. And so it made me want to have a stable atmosphere for my children as well because I grew up in a stable. At the time, I didn't understand their strictness and this and that and what they were doing. But as I got older and I got my own children, I understood. Mm-hmm. And so it helped me moving forward and trying to raise my own family. Mm-hmm. That's, yes. that's, that's amazing. And, and, you know, when I, th- I think about... A lot of the, the guests who I bring on, and mm-hmm. they all have that similarity. Like, like they had a foundation. People were around them, supporting them. If they did something they knew they weren't supposed to do, more than likely someone around them was telling them, hey, Absolutely. you know you should not be doing that. Absolutely. And, um, and as you mentioned during the break, you know, sometimes, you know, we go off and we do our own things, but that foundation. You, you will remember, because even if you go off course, um, it's like, it's not to spare the rod, spoil the child, like beat him. It's like the shepherd used the rod. He had a hook on there. And when the little sheep went out of line with the other ones, he took the rod and he, the curled part and he gently guided them back in line. And, you know, so it's like, it's like that. When you go off course and you've had a good foundation, you don't literally need a physical shepherd or someone to pull you back in. It's your own thinking is going to come back and say, listen, I know better than that. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I messed up. And you and you check, you can check yourself a little better and you can accept that, hey, I made a mistake, but I'm going to do better next time. And that's what that does. But if you don't have that type of foundation, you can probably keep doing things over and over again and not really understand that, you know, because you didn't have that foundation of, you know, uh, just trying to do the best you can and doing the right thing and having support. And um, I think a lot of uh, I, also one thing I think that was important during the time I was growing up too was my neighbors had input Mm -hmm. in how I grew up. I couldn't just do anything in the neighborhood. My, my neighbors had, um, some leverage. They can come to my house and say to my parents, I saw your son here do this. So it was also not just my family. It was the, it was the people in the community that you couldn't do it. And unfortunately, you know, not everyone gets that, but it's so important, you know, to have that. 
you know, because once you leave out the door, your parents can only do so much with inside the door and in their viewpoint, um, try to teach you as best they can. But when you get out in the world, you know, and you kind of almost on your own a little bit, it's a little different. And back when I was growing up, that kind of uh, discipline reached far outside of my house. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that um, lends me to a story that one of my brothers, um, Clarence, had mentioned to me one time. And, and um, uh, when Clarence had really um, rooted himself in his, in his faith, the Christian faith, um, he re- we had a conversation and he was saying, you know, um, there was one time he was doing something and he said he knew what he was doing wasn't right. And the only thing he could think about was if our grandmother... Mm-hmm. knew what he was doing and he said that was it that was all he really needed to change his perspective mm-hmm. and to awaken that spirit in him to say exactly i'm not going to do this anymore yes and and so i hear similar things coming yes. from you as well so i think that that is actually a model for what we should be thinking about replicating going forward yes. you know the nuclear family who's in your neighborhood what are these young people doing the village it's the village. It really, really honestly is the village. I just could not go and be disrespectful to my neighbor, for the elders or anything like that. It was like, you know, I knew better. Like, I wouldn't do certain things. that You make kids do things as they're growing up, play around, but you knew, hey, you're in front of an adult, man. I better just act right and make sure I'm, you know, straight up. And, and that was there. And my parents instilled that in me. And it, they didn't even have to literally tell me. It was it was by them just raising me that I automatically felt that. Mm-hmm. No one had to tell me that. I automatically felt that I had to respect, you know, you know, the adults in authority. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know. So we've covered quite a bit about about mm-hmm. your childhood and and, and um, your time going through high school and college. When you were in college, what changed your perspective for artwork? I mean, were you like you just grew in your appreciation for it? I just. From when I was little, I always loved art. But still, at that point, I still loved sports. I didn't even think about doing art. I, I never thought about doing it. I just knew that if I saw a picture, I'd make stand there for a while. I'm like, wow, that's really nice. Still hadn't picked up a brush at that point. Mm-hmm. I've, I've never, literally never painted a picture until I was 47. Mm. Ever. <laughs> I, and I can't even remember art class in school. That's how much I was so much into sports at that time. Mm-hmm. And, um, but I, I can't even remember being in art class. Mm. So now, <laughs> now I remember wood shop because we had wood shop. We had all those things. I remember that um, and accounting because that's what I you know, went to school for. And I was like, and I, I said, oh, I want to be an accountant because my teacher always wore a suit every day to school and he had a briefcase <laughs> and i was like man i want to be an accountant because <laughs> i want to be dressed to the nines i want to be clean yeah. i hate it i would never do it i never did it uh-huh. <laughs> so it's like but it's so funny that 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 was what i thought that i would like to do in the future was be an accountant mm-hmm. i think that's similar to what life is in general yes. we have a tendency to think okay i want to do this but not realizing that those are the things that are around us kind of guiding us exactly not necessarily in a way that's satisfying your soul, similar to what you're doing now with your artwork. Absolutely. So I think that there's a noticeable difference yes. in uh, crunching numbers, which is important, mm-hmm. but satisfying your soul and being creative. Absolutely. I want to fast forward through your college years and uh, up to that point of being 47 years old mm-hmm. where you painted your first painting. Mm-hmm. Um, can you bring us up to that point? Yes. Um, I had been married. I was married for 20, well, with my ex-wife for 26 years, and I got divorced. Um, I was uh, at 46, and um, you know, at that point, my daughter was a senior in high school. She was actually, my daughter was the salutorian mm-hmm. at, um, McCor- it was the last year they were called McCorriston. Mm-hmm. And she was the salutorian, and then she went on to Oberlin, and she has a degree in economics right now. And um, so at that time period, I had just gone through a divorce. You know, all my my son was out of the house. My daughter was out of the house. My dog had died, mm-hmm. um, and, and it was just me. And um, so I was sitting there, and I re, I always loved art. And so one day I was like, you know, I'm I'm divorced at this point. I'm not in a relationship or anything, and I'm just moseying around and just trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with the rest of my life. And I knew I always loved art, so I went and I was in Michael's one day. And um, I said, I'm, you know, let me get a canvas or something. So I, I bought a canvas. This was around October of that of uh, um, 2007. And 
I got the canvas and I bought, and there's two things that happened significant with this. Um, I bought uh, some oil paint, some supplies. I talked to the people in there, oh, can I get this and that? So I bought the canvases and bought them home. This is in October. Never started painting. They sat there. October, November, December, it sat there. So it was New Year's Eve and I'm sitting at home. And I was sitting there looking. I was just going to wait for the ball to drop. Again, I'm not really involved with anybody, and I'm just sitting there and just still trying to figure out because it still was, it was still kind of fresh from my mm. divorce. And um, so, by the way, me and my ex are good friends. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're, we're good, good. So, um, so anyway, I'm sitting there, and I happened to look over, and I saw the canvas. And so I said to myself, you know what? I'm going to be an artist. I literally said that. And so I set the canvas up and everything right by the TV. And I said, as soon as the ball drops for 2008, I'm going to be an artist. And I literally painted my first piece, New Year's Day, 2008. And it's called Contemplation. And I knew at that moment, two things with that, I knew that I didn't want to do oil painting. It was too slow for me. I'm, I'm a very fast painter. And, you know, I like to do layer upon layer upon layer and acrylic dries a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. So um, that was one thing. And the other thing is I knew that I could paint from my soul and my spirit. And I knew that it felt it felt spiritual to me when I did that. When I started painting, I had this this feeling inside of me that I had never had before. And it was like it was like magical. And I started painting the face and the nose, and, and it just felt natural. It felt like I had been doing it all my life. Almost like my mother got inside my body and took over my hands and everything, and I just started painting, and it was so natural to do it. And uh, so I painted that painting, and I sat there, and I was like, wow, I can't believe it. But again, I had to come back a couple of days later to finish it off because it was an oil painting. And um, from that moment on, I just kept painting and I, I would sit there and I would like meditate a little bit and I would get in this good space and all these ideas just start coming to me. And I, it was like they were like coming in droves and I, I just don't even know. And so I said, OK, I got to get a sketchbook because I got all these ideas. So now I have one picture, I think, on my Facebook. It's got this wall. It's like I have a whole room. It's, it's bigger than this room. And there's eight by ten sketches just taped all around the wall. That's the wallpaper in the room. It's all around the wall because I just sketch so much. I sketch and I draw something else and then I do it. And then maybe I'll make it a bigger painting. But I knew it was just this, it was just this rush that I had. And I, I, didn't, I didn't even have to think about what I was doing. It just was happening. And so now, I, so I named my studio KJL Art Sanctuary because that was coming from my divorce and all those things it gave me a sense of like peace and it was like a sanctuary going inside the studio and working um i i, I wish i could t explain to someone what i feel when i'm doing it because it's definitely a feeling it's not a technical thing it's a feeling thing so if i'm in a Let's say I had a, you know, something. Well, you know, I, I want to interrupt you because okay. I want you to hold on to that <laughs> okay. because um, we're, we're up on another break. But I believe someone is out there and you hear what Kenneth is saying. You may be in the same position, the same situation. Take the chance to satisfy your soul because that is something that it's anyone who's listening or seeing you. Mm hmm. You can't describe it because it's on that metaphysical level. Yes. And it's something that we can achieve and we can attain and it can be sustained. Yes. And it, a lot of times it's just us getting in the way of ourselves. Absolutely. And I encourage you folks to do that. You're listening and watching the Trenton 365 show. We'll be back after a very short break. I'm with Kenneth Lewis Sr., an amazing artist, and we're going to be talking more about his artwork after the break. Hey everyone, you know, let's all stop what we're doing right now and take a moment. That felt good, huh? Just like that, we had a nice special sort of moment together. 
Of course, they don't all need to be quiet moments to be special. They could be loud moments, goofy moments, sporty moments, dorky moments. Moments where we talk or walk or just hang out. It doesn't really matter. They all count. Because every time dads like us take a moment like that to spend with our kids, well, it's pretty momentous. <laughs> Sounds like somebody agrees. So let's take a moment to make a moment today. Call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Remember in the beginning when you first started to build a life for you and your family? You never imagined it would come to this. Instead of living your dreams, you're living with debt. In fact, it's smothering you. Now there's a way you can take back control with one simple call. If you owe $10,000 or more in credit card debt, you qualify to receive a free, no-obligation consultation on how to get rid of that debt for good. Call the Debt Helpline now. We work on your behalf to reduce your debt. We specialize in credit cards, retail store cards, and medical bills. One simple call is all it takes to get the ball rolling to a debt-free life. Stop living with debt and start living your dreams. Call the Debt Helpline now. 800-709-4389. 800-709-4389. That's 800-709-4389. When I was little, I didn't talk for a long time. I liked things to always be the same. Anything new or different would scare and upset me. I was very sensitive to lights and sounds. It was almost like I had bigger eyes and ears than everyone else. So I built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. I didn't like looking people in the eye. It made me feel uncomfortable. I'd throw big tantrums over little things like when my socks didn't match. Sometimes I'd do the same things over and over. Until one day, I found out I had autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I learned how to live with it better. You can see signs of autism in children as young as 18 months. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. 